Now that we've taken a look at measurements, let's open a couple of pages that we have in Chapter 2, and we can see exactly the difference between a liquid and a fixed layout. So I'll go to File and Open. And inside of Chapter 2, I have a fixed sidebar.html. And I'm just going to hold down my Command key on the Mac, and it would be your Control key on the PC. And we're going to also open liquid sidebar.html. Let's take a look at our liquid sidebar.html first. Basically, what these are are a CSS starter page. Just so that you know where they are, let's take a look. So if I go under File and New, I get this screen up. This screen is great. I'm able to choose a new HTML page from here, CSS, ActionScript, PHP, .NET, ColdFusion, etc. If I choose HTML from here, I'm also able to see a layout. In my layout, I'm able to see a bunch of different types of files that I might want to open. So for instance, I am going to just click once on two column fixed left sidebar header, and then we see a preview over in the right column as to exactly what that is. So I see that it's two columns, all widths in pixels, left sidebar, and it's going to include a header and a footer. Underneath that, over on the right column, I see that my doc type is going to be XHTML 1.0 transitional. It's a drop down menu, so I can always change that. Next is my layout CSS. Now, this is actually fairly important. This is by default going to add the CSS to the head tags of my page. The problem with this is that it's going to be on that page only. And if I copy that page and create another page from that page, then that is going to have that inside of the head tags as well. So for instance, if I change the H1 on my first page that I enabled, then if I don't change that on the second page, then I will have a different look and feel to the H1 tag from one page to the other. And that's not necessarily something that we would like. So I'm going to say, instead of add to head, I'm going to choose create new file. And that way, it will create a new external linked style sheet. And then I don't have to worry about it being specifically to a individual page. Then I can make the changes, and it could be a 1,000 pages of a website. And I could change the font in just one place for all of those pages. That's the beauty of CSS. I can also enable in-context editing from here. Now, we really haven't talked about in-context editing yet, but basically it's a way for us to enable a place, instead of an actual template, a place that our client can then edit particular parts of our page. So if we don't want the client to worry about the navigation or any images on the page, we can just enable particular sections of the page to be in context editing, and then the client is going to be able to edit that themselves. Click on Create. I need to decide where I'm going to save this. So instead of the actual name of this, I'm just going to choose fixed.css. If we fold open our files and I'm able to see all of my files here, you also see that I have a folder called Assets. Now, Assets is just a way to organize things. And if I double click on that, then I can see that I've got several other files now inside of that one. It's really all about organization. And we'll talk more about how to lay that out effectively in just a little bit. But basically, I have a CSS folder, a Flash folder, an Images folder, and a JavaScript folder. So double click your CSS folder, and we'll go ahead and save that inside of there. Now that I have my page here, I need to make sure and save this first so that the CSS is also then linked to this particular page. If I start making changes in this page, then my pathing to that CSS file is not going to be correct. So we'll say File and Save. And I'm just going to call this Fixed as well. And we'll just leave it in Chapter 2.
So when I'm using a CSS layout page, let's take a look at split view first. And I'm just going to scroll down just a tiny bit here so I can see inside of my head tags, instead of all of my CSS in here, I have it linked. So I have a link file. It has where it's located at, my assets, CSS, fixed.css. Over in my panels, in my CSS panel, I'm going to fold up my insert panel and fold out my CSS panel so I can actually see what that is over here. So now I can see that I have body tags, UL, OL, DL, etc. And we'll explain more about what those things are in just a tiny little bit. But basically, we also need to understand the benefits of using CSS. CSS is a language that works alongside HTML. It was developed by the W3C, which is the World Wide Web Consortium. And a style sheet is really basically a collection of rules. If you've ever used styles in a program like InDesign or Quark, then this concept will be a little bit easier for you to understand. If not, that's OK. We'll still get it. CSS is used to modify the appearance of our HTML in a variety of different ways. So let's take a look at the style sheet that goes along with this. This is also gives us a view of a related files view. If you've used an older version of Dreamweaver, then this will be a little bit different. Take a look at the top part of your window, and you'll see where our three buttons are that says Code, Split, and Design View. You'll also see a place where it says Source Code and Fixed CSS, the file that we have actually attached to this page. So if I do a right click on Fixed.CSS, I can then open this as a separate file. So once I have this open, this is really still linked, even though we have both the fix.html and our fix.css actually open. The CSS starter pages were developed to make sure that you can learn CSS really easily. So I see right away that I have a bunch of comments in my file. This is a great way for you to learn CSS. So maybe keeping the CSS file handy and your fix.html handy will be a great way for you to understand CSS. So let's go back and take a look at our page again. I'm going to go back to just my design view so I can see a little bit easier. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller so that I can see it. And again, that is a Command minus on the Mac and a Control minus on the PC. So even in our CSS starter pages, we have instructions. It tells you all about clearing methods, logo replacement, and backgrounds for this particular file. So I see that I have a place that I can put my logo at the top. I've got a header. I've got a sidebar. And no matter what size I would pull my browser window, if I were to open this in a browser window, I'm going to see this as a fixed size. It's not ever going to change. So it's all pixel-based. If we take a look at our liquid sidebar.html, this is a percentage-based file. So for instance, if we take a look at this in our browser, and I'm just going to click on this little button right here and preview in Firefox, because that is available on both Mac and the PC. I see that depending on where I stretch my browser window, my page will then rewrap and will resize. So if this is what I would like, I need to make sure and keep this into consideration. So let's go back to Dreamweaver. I'm going to go ahead and close these windows out so I can see Dreamweaver again. All right, so now we have a bunch of files open. So I can see that now in Dreamweaver, all of these end up in little tabs at the top of my screen. So that makes it a whole lot easier to go back and forth, both on the PC and the Mac. The PC has always been like this. So if you've used Dreamweaver before on the PC, it won't look any different to you, but on the Mac, this is very much different being able to see these in tabs now. I'm still able to see both my source view and my CSS view here. So this is my related files view. 
If I had a whole bunch of files in here, more CSS files, let's say I'm working on a WordPress site and I have related files that are both CSS and PHP files, over on the right hand side here I have a little tab that I'm able to see. I can do a custom filter, show all files or maybe I want to just see the related files, the PHP files and not the CSS files. I can do a custom filter on those related files over here. So, so far we've taken a look at planning and how to do a flow chart really as a first point of interest to make sure both you and the client are aware of what pages are going to be involved. Our main pages, secondary pages, third level pages, etc. What links and what information might be on those pages. That can be done in a multitude of ways. The flowchart can be done inside of Dreamweaver, it can be done in Illustrator, Fireworks, etc. It really doesn't matter where as long as you're sharing it with the client so both of you are on the exact same level. So next we're going to be taking a look at how to put together a Dreamweaver site.